All right, guys, welcome to another episode of our podcast here with another guest this time. So uh, this time around, we have J Ruler and Sacred Beats here with us. And that they, they, we have gotten this pretty smoothly. Definitely didn't start late like we usually do. No, so we... no problems whatsoever. <laughs> um, and Oscar and Joey are actually here this time for the first time. We got the whole crew. So we'll see we if this is a good or before. No, yeah. Oscar's always not here. No, no, no. We had one podcast with all three of us. No, the, I mean uh, like with, with a guest at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've never done that before, so this could be good or bad. We'll find out. So, yeah, so um, there's... As, as a request, sorry to interrupt, we right now reserve episodes 69 and 420 of the TCG Scrubs <laughs> podcast. I just want to get that out of the way now. And, and episode 1,337. We reserve those spots. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's that, the that took me a second. 1,337 one for it. Leap. 1,337 leap. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, wow. uh, Oscar. <laughs> were you, were you just making really, a note of those really numbers? Old school shit, yeah. <laughs> Look like Oscar just made a note of that, so we should be good for that. <laughs> right, cool. awesome. uh, and uh, I want to make a point I, before I forget. So if you guys are new here, obviously you can listen to this on iTunes and Google Play, and that's actually while we have them here. That's it. and thanks mainly to to J Ruler helping us out <laughs> figure out how to actually stream over to those applications. So. That's a, a thanks to them if you guys are listening to this on, on iTunes or Google Play or SoundCloud. Because oh, I had no help. idea what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, like I didn't either. Uh, I made all the mistakes and then I uh, showed you what to do without making those mistakes. So it's just, like, it just a couple of days of more platforms the better. Clicking around and nice. yeah, I just I just submitted our podcast to Google Play today. It was drag and drop after SoundCloud's already set up, so it wasn't. Wasn't too bad. Yeah, it's a lot faster than iTunes was. It took like a day. Oh, I know. Like, yep, you're good. <laughs> Got it. Apple's so picky about everything. It's, oh yeah. It's ridiculous. Because they want you to have all your uh, proprietary bullshit. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, no, I'm I'm glad I got out of out of that market a couple of years ago. Because <laughs> I, I I I took I took a I took a bullet. I was like, you know what? I have however many dollars of music and stuff. I I need to cut it off now before I get in too much deeper. But mm. I'm very glad. <laughs> But so, yeah, I actually just finished listening to your guys' podcast yesterday, so that I, I quite enjoyed that one. Was, well, thank you. I, I, I feel like that one was, was the most consistently from beginning to the end, uh, having Sacred Beats be angry than we've seen before. Yeah. Usually we'll have bursts, but it, that one felt like pretty consistent. Yeah, it was a high blood pressure day for me the whole time. <laughs> but, and that's the thing with the topic, too, it was really hard for me to get my point across because I was so angry about it. Like, when I was going through and editing it, I realized just how much, like, I really didn't say anything, much like, you know, like a politician would. I just went on for hours not saying, like, anything. But that's what people want. That's what they want to hear. It's, it, like, it's it, not the content of the of the message, it's the emotion behind it. It's just it, the sound, the light of the sound is yeah. all it is. Right. Exactly. Um, and have you, uh, out of curiosity, have you guys been uh, uh, actively or passively following? I don't even know what to follow anymore. All the stuff in After Dark and US Group going on. I I feel like there's something different all the time. But have you guys kept up at all with that? Uh, trying to. I mean, uh, understandably, there may be a little bias that we have to the US Facebook group. I don't know just, if you might have picked up on just that. Just a little one. <laughs> um, but in terms of After Dark, especially, has gotten worse where it, at first it was supposed to be the place where you could disseminate information that like was getting banned or removed it was the, the it was group. the force of will underground at one and time. now it's even like cuckier than the uh the official group itself where it's nothing but like shitty memes and and like no one's really getting anything accomplished yeah that's what i feel like the original intent was for stuff like hey we leaked these cards we're gonna share them hey we want to uh say the game is dead a thousand times without being banned or all, all that different stuff and it feels more like uh especially as of late just uh this weird i don't even know what what's going on it's it's, it's just super weird lately well and... here's here's the here's the thing with after dark is it's a uh, medium is only as good as its purpose of conveying something so like after dark could have been hey here's the place where you can talk about the things that the company doesn't want you to know about you know here's where we leak and have all the dirt on everyone who's close to the company and all that. So it's the gossip and the 
right. expose and all that, which they do sometimes. Or it can be a place for people to talk about, you know, game mechanics and maybe in a more adult way, kind of like I guess our reputation is is to swear and stuff, which they don't introduce to the official channels. But what does After Dark do? It doesn't have. It, it doesn't do anything. There's therefore, nothing inherently unique about it. Therefore, therefore, since it doesn't accomplish anything that can't be done elsewhere, it is meaningless. Like that's right. ultimately our, my take on it. But. It's, it's just like uh, a cyst hanging off the U.S. group. <laughs> it's it's kind of seemed to me every time I, I I go and visit and you know it's rarely it's all it's all just like kind of like a inclusive club of people that like are making memes and like bullshitting around and right right exactly. I just it's, I just kind of write it off unless there's something valuable there. It's the same eight or ten people over mm -hmm. and over again. It's right. like yeah. I, I'm tired. Of, it's like watching children you know, color in a coloring book and then shit themselves and go and take a nap. Like, that's... And you see that over every, every and over day. again. Like it's, like a, it's like I'm a fucking preschool teacher, <laughs> but, like, a special education preschool teacher. Right. So it's like they're already children and they don't want to have to, like, deal with them anyway and their stupid problems, their inability, like, to socialize properly. And then on top of that, they're autistic. So it, it's like I can't get... Like, like, you can't get anything in edgewise. Like, I see people coming to these groups all the time and, like, very rarely, like... Are they like trying to get into the game and they need more or like useful information and all people are doing it's like ah, eh, well You're really taking time away from my memes, which are more important to me than yeah. you know actually trying to evangelize the game and getting new people to play so yeah. And that's what they do. They do it on every single group It's just it's just the same thing over and over and over again. So it seems to have really uh you know, gone down to individual states or individual stores having their own pages so they can actually talk about the game no, I agree. It, uh, uh, Oscar, <laughs> I know you've been quiet. Well, no, uh, it it just got really bad recently, and like I used to follow it and just read everything, and and then uh, Anton posted his, "Hey, I'm gonna burn his banner," and I was like, "And unfollow." <laughs> <laughs> Never went back, and you see people like, "Hey, is it true Anton got unbanned?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm glad I'm not in there anymore." <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a weird <laughs> situation. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever, like, commented... The only time I've posted in uh, After Dark is when we did the interview with Anton. I don't think I've ever posted or commented on anything outside of there. And, uh, for... I don't think... I don't like the interactions that go in there. I like following it. I still follow After Dark because I need to see if there's ever news items and stuff. Because right. if anything ever comes up that is taken off the US or Reddit page, but I want to still show it in our videos or whatever, that's the only place I can go to. But it's like... Uh, it's it's just super annoying now. I, every time I see a post now, I'm like, ah, this is annoying. So let me ask the the three of you. Uh, in light of our last, the topic of our last episode is, you know, these these groups like the uh, After Dark group, obviously not, but namely the Reddit group, the uh, the Discord, the unofficial fan Discord, and uh, the unofficial, not totally staffed by real people who work for the company and draw money from them, uh, Facebook group. Like, what is your stance on their level of moderation into the conversation and things that people are allowed to share there? I mean, nominally, there's supposed to be fan groups run by fans and, you know, curate the material that fans want to see, but as we all know, they they moderate i think to a too great of a degree what people are allowed to discuss yeah it, it doesn't feel like a fan group like coming from pokemon we had was it verbank city and that's what their group was called and and that was truly a fan group you didn't have people who would remove leaks or or police it hard so when you came into this it does feel like they removed too much like what's the point of removing leaks they want to protect stores from shutting down and keep the game alive but i just don't agree with a lot of the things they do i'm in it because you gotta be in a group somewhere, but right. no, yeah, I, 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 I don't, don't like that. Like you said, Robert is a uh, an admin of the group, and when Stephanie was uh, a head judge, she was an admin of the group. Like, I feel like it should be other people kind of heading up the group. I agree. Hmm. Yeah, Joey. Oh, um, well, <laughs> I am not really a part of any of the groups. Like, I, I don't go on the on the Discord. Um, I I am I really go on Facebook nowadays, but um so I get almost all my information from either Colin or Oscar, um, um and so you know besides if you know if if spoilers are 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 
coming out and then i've been doing some the spoiler videos um the last two uh sets but um but besides that i rarely get like look at what's going on um i actually like i i really only pay attention to like um to our discord and to demo 73's discord sometimes which is like um and like that's really the only forcible like input that i get besides like oscar and con like like you know messaging me like hey did you see this cool j ruder guy um <laughs> So I don't, I can't really say too much about the about this, but um, yeah, yeah, I I remember when uh, like I'm I pretty much have never been in the Force of Will Discord, but the I remember our first encounter with that when we had gotten the Lapis starter decks, I think, a couple days early, and so we did openings of them and shared and I shared them in the U.S. group, and then uh, we were told we had to take them down because we weren't, and I was like super confused because this i was still i'd never seen that before and coming off of pokemon that was something we always see, that was a big deal when something was leaked or gotten early they was shared and shared everywhere and everyone went and watched it, and it was like a big event almost so when something was leaked or gotten early and so I, it was like people know about this what what people it's on youtube it's on the internet why are we blocking it for news group so that was my first encounter and i was super confused about that but yeah i agree i don't think that anyone who uh, at least in the official capacities associated with the company should be moderating it should be like big players or or maybe like store owners or people who are fans of the game should be in charge of the fan page and then it's not like you're getting paid to be in, in the fan page so a moderator on it so if you become a part of the payroll force will then just recuse yourself it's not like unless you're on a power huge power trip there's no reason to still be a moderator well, hold on hold on well, that, that, that last thing you just said paid. they technically well, are getting paid to run the official page because they're representing the company right. and and controlling the information that we get so you think like when you get those those lapis starter decks and you do the, the video you think the company would be like oh great this is just free advertisement right. like the set's about to come out and this is something that builds hype like spoilers leaks you know, uh, pre-release videos build so much are you kidding me if i work for the company i would be like hey uh we're designing ray across the three right now it's top secret guys oops <laughs> oops <Oopsie. laughs> drop drop a card like yeah, it just fell leak. on the floor someone fixed it you know what i mean like you would right you would strategically <laughs> want it's, that it's to happen you don't have to do exactly like we are doing like right. all of us here are doing all of the work for them because they don't yeah. have to fucking advertise for a game <laughs> and then and then they get something like so hype inducing as leaks or spoilers and they're and they just whitewash the fucking internet from it you're not allowed to talk about that like if you like if you gain information inappropriately or illegally and post it on something even a fan page too fucking bad like that's it, it's our page it's for it's the internet and we should be able to do what we want with that but when you have people on the payroll controlling that technically they are getting paid to moderate that information well, and, it, and it's and it's interesting because it's like when you're at, like I'm really big into like movies and specifically comic book movies and so when a comic con happens or something like that a trailer will leak online and it's like the company knows that's going to leak online if they didn't want it to leak online they they wouldn't let it D Disney when they first had the very first trailer shown at a comic con a very first comic con. It was nowhere to be found because they didn't want that specific one to be leaked but the next one was leaked online and it's become a marketing strategy because those leaks are its, its own type of hype to the hardcore community and they wait for the polish trailer for, to, for the worldwide audience but it's a separate type of hype for the big fans and it's sort of a, almost a mini reward for the hardcore fans who want to search out and find that leak and so it's interesting they're not taking advantage of people who like the game so much that they're hyped about just seeing pictures of cards taken on crappy don't phones get it. Don't <laughs> yeah. Get it. yeah um advertising something um magic does that um that you know like 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 they basically do do you know the same kind of spoiler schedule um the force will does but something else that they do is is they they choose um specific like like groups um like um or like stores um and they and they give them like an exclusive spoiler to kind of you know funnel traffic into their site and stuff. So you know so so in this example like like Force Will would maybe give give the, you know us like oh hey you know we're 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 gonna give you guys you know two two spoilers you know and and then and then you can show it on 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 your channel and and then okay Jay you know 
um, J Ruler and and you know um, and like we'll we'll give you like 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 these two and then Demo Seven Three and so they kind of like like spread around leaks too, which is like which is like pretty interesting and you know and and kind of like how how Colin was saying where this is like a natural marketing strategy that that Magic does and um, and I mean and you know and. If there are leaks that they don't that they didn't want or they didn't want to give out then you know it's you know it's you know it's still it's still really good for them and like and that can like yeah, yeah. but so you know that would be something interesting that i would uh, that'd be pretty cool that, that's, that's actually something i pitched back when streams were a thing yeah to, I had, jordan. I had mentioned <laughs> to jordan i was like hey you should do this and and he got shut down pretty quick He's like no that's not fair because I thought he meant like give it to only U.S. players. But I meant to every streamer because he or content creator. Cause he's like, well, we can do Italy and Germany and then everybody, and nobody would get cards. And I was like, I don't think you understand what I'm trying to say. Right. Well, it's not well, fair to Jordan because then he wouldn't have a job. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. well from what I heard, he doesn't. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, the uh, was it the uh, Force of Will Discord group? It. I've been there a couple of times. I don't ever really see any Force of Will related things. It seems like they no, talk about just it's other not. stuff. It's 4chan. It's fucking 4chan right. for for <laughs> even more children. Like the, the average age hey, or the for adults. hold on the average mental age of a 4chan user is like 14 and a half. Yeah, that's about right. Force of Will's Discord group, 12 and a half. Like it's a little <laughs> it's a little dumb. Still too young to play the game. Bro. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Especially you know, with how, how much they're toning down with all those art now. Exactly. <laughs> look, look, <laughs> the, the people who hang out in the Force of Will Discord groups, like, I know what real boobs feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. They're like... Just look at my mouse pad. <laughs> yeah. <they're> just... <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you're like 12 and you want to you wanna act like you know... You, know, you, you put some cantaloupes in the microwave. And just, <laughs> just, <laughs> be edgy. Exactly. I, I've seen Soul Calibur. I know it's like Jello. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Splashing around all over the place. God, we've all been there. Some of us are still there, aren't some we? Us, some of us might still be there. We're, we're, we're just avoiding that Discord because we're afraid what will happen. Don't, don't go, don't go. It's not good. Yeah. yeah. No, um, uh, so... How do you uh, segue uh, from that? How do you segue? <laughs> yeah, I, know, yeah, I, know. I was trying to think of like how do I so how do I twist this you? into? Uh... Well, here's what we <laughs> do. Here's what we do. We don't try to segue. We just do a hard break into Bam, whatever the next. Break. Just pretend that that conversation didn't happen and go on to the next one. <laughs> you edit between those, don't you? Nope. No. I, don't I feel. I feel like. <laughs> I feel like going to listen to y'all like. They float in that really quickly, or they fill that with a laugh or something. We almost know because he knows when to cut me off. Yeah, we, we've, we've been friends for so long. Like, look, we've been to so many GPs, and we've been on so many road trips together. We know we've been, we spent so much time around each other. It's like when we were trying to figure out how to do the uh, – set all this shit up, and you guys were telling us. And, and Colin said something about us switching back and forth. Yeah, he we know when he took happens. the mouse, and then I took the mouse. And it's like, I know when when he's about to break, and he knows when I'm about to break. Because so we... I'll start yelling about something, and my hands will yeah. be up here. And then where, I, that's then how I, you know. That's how you know. And then you're like, all right, uh, on to spoilers. And then when I, like, I'll run out of steam and just like, and, and then he's like, here's the next thing. So just, you just go right into it. I mean, the right. transitions are the one thing I don't think I edit at all, because they just yeah. sort of naturally happen. Nice. Did, uh... So there's your segue. So go. <laughs> what, you, what you got, man? Well, speaking of your guys' road trips, you guys should should road trip to Dallas if there's a GP there. Just just saying. I I used to live I used to live in Dallas. Oh really? Uh, is that where you guys are right now? We're, no, but that's where we go to for the uh, um, GPs or whatever. That's where we went for Pokemon when they had their whatever they're called and stuff like that. Okay. But we're, we're like at, what two hours away from Dallas. You're like Austin Temple area. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're further south, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I lived I lived in uh, Texas for ten years through middle school and high school. Oh wow. Well. So I mean, I still got all my family there pretty much, and so yeah, if they do one in Dallas, I would definitely be there because it'd be a really great excuse to visit family, and yeah. you know, we could meet up for sure. They better fly though. Oh, absolutely, dude. It's always, <laughs> yeah. Driving there is awful. Have you guys ever been to the East Coast? No. Nope. Yes. No. Don't go. Don't go. It's not. Worth it. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. No, I, it's I, fuck. Yeah. It's terrible. It's, I was, like her- it's just heroin and cold. All <laughs> That's all it is. Pretty much. I, I was just. To, I was just to New York uh, uh, several weeks ago, and it's a. Uh, 
yeah, no, it was it was very cold there, but like that was uh, I I took an Uber around, and that just driving as a passenger was one of the most stressful things I've ever done yeah. in New York City. Yeah. I uh, I. I could never imagine actually road tripping and having to be anywhere near those East Coast city areas. <laughs> well, the, the thing about the East Coast, like we live in a town, I live in a town that was founded by George Washington's brother Jeez. in like the 1780s, all right? So, I knew he had a brother. Yeah, he had, he had quite a few. I think he was one of like five or six maybe. But, oh, wow. Um, everything in the East Coast is as old as you can get in the United States. So cities that exist here are designed were designed you know two three four hundred years ago for horse traffic and foot traffic when you get out west like when i've lived in dallas everything is wide open and you can move around easier but like you're saying in new york even though you know it's been built up over 400 years since the dutch had it i mean it's just who who made that who designed that it's awful no new york city is <laughs> fucking horrible uh no they i didn't design it no, it's designed for rickshaws and, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. carts. Right, and stepping over mounds of horse shit. Yeah, like and, and dead people. <laughs> to, to, be fair, to be fair, to be fair, I think like I think it, most city, lost cities, like uh, Sacramento uh, in California. I, I remember I, I was driving in there, and I was uh, it was terrible because I was going from an event and I was chaperoning the uh, producer of uh, Boondock Saints to his hotel and I got lost on the way there in Sacramento for like a solid one or two hours trying to figure out how to get just what like two points of the city that were like should have been a couple hours apart and I somehow took one road that took a highway that was one right, highway right. into a separate city and it and I took a road back that ended up dead ending that should have got it was I just I don't understand the structure of cities for the life of me I, I don't get it <laughs> But um, before I forget, two things before I forget. One, because Oscar will get mad if I forget this. If you guys are liking this, <laughs> we, we, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TCG Scrubs, where we have our little bits. We actually are going to be uploading a video where we talked about some of the After Dark stuff while we played a, a game uh, that totally went really well. Um, and I was going to mention, you guys, you guys have a Patreon patreon.com slash jruler right yes that's correct yes um and you guys were actually i, I thought of this because uh, george washington because this is totally related but you guys were doing your own uh card game on lackey uh, that you were spoiling on your patreon did you want to talk about that uh, real quick yeah we'll talk about that real quick um we talk we we're talking about it more and more as the date gets closer so we're working along uh james heihachi aka the asshole dad of force of will and uh, he's the one that maintains the uh, fow modular plugin he's the one that does all of that and so he's he's, he's a an, lackey wizard he is a lackey he's, he's a programming motherfucker if i may i pardon my french and um so he's he's helping us on the technical side of things but um it's called darkest days it's a world war ii card games uh a subject that i'm i've always been fascinated by Sacred Beats is brought into yeah. out of curiosity. Um, they but have it's guns, gonna, I know that. Uh, much. Yeah, exactly. I played Medal of Honor. <laughs> so the card game, the card game is going to be free to play for everyone, and uh, we'll release the base set. We're thinking in January of 2018 uh, in beta, and then every other month will be another set, like you would get in Force of Will, say, like it, uh, probably smaller in size. Yeah. However, the uh, game will chronicle the entire conflict of World War II, starting not with the invasion of Poland, but the Battle of France in 19, June 1940, and will go on through the entire conflict, you know, in, in almost month increments, very, very uh, mm -hmm. short time frames, and will chronicle the entire conflict as it evolves. So we just wanted to, we've always been attracted to game design, and um, we figured we'd try to put something out there rather than, we've made a number of things for ourselves right but, especially um, after it being something i studied in school and then didn't do any of right it's um because that thing is when it comes to the historical aspects of it and like the um uh the aesthetic design of the game uh i have no part in that whatsoever it's mostly just just testing mechanics and, and advertising is essentially where where i'm trying to come in and um but the, the point is to get it up on Lackey first, because most people labor over the uh, the tangible version instead of actually creating a game that works. So on Lackey, we can give it to yeah. people for free. We can get free testing. We can get um, 
and essentially the Patreon that's going to be set up for it is just going to be uh, spoilers or if you essentially want to help out with the funding. Yeah, it. so it's going to be its own separate thing right. from the uh, digital. So you, it'll project. be it'll oh, be free to play. It'll have its own separate Patreon, and your Patreon um, subscription. subscription or proceeds will go to getting early access to spoilers of the cards. So in between sets, we'll spoil all the cards for that set on Patreon, and then. You're, you're donating a few dollars to be able to get access to that before it comes out. So that's, that's, that's awesome. basically it. Yeah. Is there the concept of, of World War Two and like chronically like like having different sets be like different battles and stuff is what it sounds like. Sounds super interesting. I, mean, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. I know well, our friend Michael will love that. Platform, you know, there's, yeah. there's, it's mainly just tabletops. There's no card game that really represents <laughs> it. Yeah, well, I mean, if you guys are interested, follow us, you know, on online, on Patreon, on YouTube, whatever. We'll talk more about it. And we'll once everything's set up, we'll, we'll, we don't want to waste a whole lot of time here. But if that sounds like something you're interested, um, follow us or TCG Scrubs. We'll be on again. You guys will see us again. So. Episode 69, right? <laughs> Episode 69 is our next one. So just start sure, cranking right. them out. Right. So mail, <laughs> mail them in until you get there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I know I was super interested. I, I, I find that interesting. But it, like I know Joey and I used to play Airsoft. And one of the cool things we I, I, I thought was cool was doing like a... Uh, mill sims of like uh, World War Two, where you had to do strictly in era stuff and guns and all that, and so I learned a lot of it just like through that. But and also our friend is a bit really big into World War Two also. So, but um, um, Colin, let me ask you real quick. I remember you and I had a conversation once related to this, and it's related to Force of Will uh, obliquely, uh, but <laughs> um, about the airsoft thing. I remember you told me once about people who you you referred to as uh playing chair soft oh chair soft and, yeah. and how and how that ties into people who play force of will oh. like they, they play it from the desktop like right. commenting but they don't actually play it can right. you explain play, that yeah. to sacred beats so he can uh he can hear that? yeah so so airsoft and i'm a little bit guilty of this too to be fair but and airsoft uh so you have people obviously you you buy your guns you go out you play it like paintball and all that stuff but because it's a lot of replicas and really cool stuff you do and upgrade a lot of customization so you have people called chair softers and all they do is they they'll buy guns they'll spend thousands of dollars on upgrade right. parts and making the gun pretty and yeah. doing all this stuff posting pictures of it but they never actually go out and play the game but they'll comment on like the game state on gun state of the guns and in industry on how airsoft is doing and different things like that and they'll a lot of times be very vocal about it but you'll, you'll be like i never see you on the field what, what's going on joey knows exactly. what i'm talking about yeah. I, I do this too obviously joey knows I, i'm guilty of this but uh that that's basically what a chair softer is and it uh is, see I, i'm kind of guilty of that because I, I would just go to evike.com and then just scroll through stuff and never buy anything because i didn't have the money well i mean you and i come across <laughs> that we come across that all the time like I mean, we, we both, like, work out recreationally, but you get a lot of these, like, bro science guys that, like, they have it all figured out, but they don't they don't work out, like, at all. Right. Or, like, they don't they don't have any results to show for it. Or, um... The exact opposite, where they spend the entire time right. they're alive at the gym, and then they just go home and sleep and, and take a gallon of, like, powder <laughs> instead of actual right. food. Right. But it's like, you know, they're those guys that walk around like this, all the time it's like they have invisible lat syndrome but, and they're but, just like, but what you know. is it what is it with people it's like any hobby you always have these people like the the chair i love that name chair soft it makes <laughs> the chair soft they make it. they that. make me laugh it's a double entendre it's perfect and um it's it's you know what is it about humans like some select group of humans that attach themselves to these hobbies like force of will I mean, and that's what After Dark and, and the Facebook group and Reddit group are about. It's like, do you ever play the game? Or do you just, like, make these wild speculations about it? Like, wh why do people do that? Well, and uh, it's amazing the amount of times, especially in After Dark, that people comment in. And I'll see people be like, either, hey, I don't play the game anymore, but blank, blank. Or someone will say something okay. and someone will reply and be like, do you even play the game? And they're like, well, no, I stopped playing, like, forever ago. And it's like... The amount of people that are commenting on the state of the game who don't play the game is 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 crazy. Uh, I don't get it. I don't really understand it. 
So there, there's so many better things to do with your time than like comment on something you know nothing about. But. Well, that or if you're actually into it enough to comment on it, like be into it. Yeah. Like it's one thing if you can't do it, because like with their like going back to I guess airsoft for me, like I didn't know anybody and there wasn't like a field anywhere around for me to go to, so I just like you know mm. shot cans and and ketchup <laughs> packets in my attic. <laughs> and uh, that's fair. And um, but it was like. Essentially, like I was into more like the mechanical side of it, so I was taking apart the air compressor and adjusting the springs and doing all that kind of shit. So I went online for that, and then just like you know, scrolling through websites looking for stuff that I actually wanted to buy but couldn't. And uh, but for the most part, I never got to do it, so I didn't really focus too hard on it. I just wanted like like a gun I could shoot in my attic and not get in trouble with my parents, <laughs> even though I eventually did because there were BBs everywhere. <laughs> and I, could, I didn't co I didn't cover it up really well. It's like, what happened to all the ketchup? And it's like, uh, I'll be right Why, back. What? <laughs> Why does the vacuum clink when you, whenever I use it now? <laughs> Just <laughs> no reason. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Hey, do you remember uh, when before we started recording, I said something smelled like dog shit? What it, is it? it is you. It's me. <laughs> yeah. What is it? I is it my breath? It smells like dog shit. You stepped in dog shit. <laughs> Did I? On the way to get beer, you Hold stepped on. in dog shit. Um, I, there's no way I stepped in dog shit. <laughs> Clean boot. He was sitting then there the whole you. time then like Sherlock, you. like, I'm going to figure this I out while we're talking. I don't smell like dog shit. There's no way. <laughs> Dude, it's you, man. <laughs> you're used to your own smell. You don't smell. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you walk into someone's house and you're like, this smells weird. But you walk into your house and you're like, this is normal. And everyone else right. thinks it's weird. Right. I brush my exactly. teeth. Everyone is it my breath? Every, hold on. Everyone's house has like a really unique smell. Like I always remember that as like a kid, like thinking that like yeah. Everyone's house has that smell. And if you blindfolded me and like you know disoriented me and put me in some one of my friends' house, I could tell you who it was. Well, you've been to my house. Does it smell like dog shit? In my no, house? it doesn't. Then what is it? It's not me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's your fucking cat box that's all over the place. <laughs> the cat's walking around with shit all over the it's place, not... stomping all over everything. And you blame me, and hold I on. come over. I said it's I believe, not my fault. I believe I said dog shit, not cat shit. <laughs> no. You're dog. so used to the cat shit. To be fair, it like anymore. Shit. Dog shit and cat shit I smell very differently. Mm -hmm. Calm, they calm, do. No. Their, their diets are very different. Their what the fuck are, are we different. supposed to be talking about? Just fuck off. Let's move on to the next. <laughs> I don't smell like dog shit. <laughs> so so speaking of things that are not dog shit, we should go to no, the no, order no, of the week. Of things that are dog shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's let's what like, I said. Let's talk about. Wait, wait till the... you hear about the rule oh, of yeah, the week. Oh yeah, that was just a transition, right? Perfect. I don't, I don't yeah. actually smell like dog shit. <laughs> yeah, that was just the ruler smell we had. <laughs> <laughs> Hate you guys. This ruler is awesome. Oh, fuck yourselves. Better than trash pandas. <laughs> you guys, you guys said the same thing about soul. And if it wasn't for Prisco to gay, soul would totally have been a thing. I hate you guys. Uh, I don't remember saying that. I, 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 I never. Said you guys that. all were. You all doubted soul being viable. No way. Anyways, you just wait. I'm gonna fucking beat you guys all with panda, and it'll be the greatest thing ever. Um, Dude. Pandas almost pandas are almost good. They're they're slowly getting to almost okay. They they're missing they're missing like two yellow cards, I think, in my opinion. That'll that'll put it over the edge. They're they're close though. I uh I'm I I'm, I made a pretty pretty good panda deck. I think. I don't believe yeah, you. Alright, we yeah, need to go through one video without talking about pandas. Yeah. So sword <laughs> Swordsman of Fire is our ruler of the week this week. Um Sorry, I was smelling his hair to make sure it didn't <laughs> <laughs> um, So, in case you guys don't know, Swordsman of Fire is the Wanderer guy who is able to... His ruler side, he's able to play any Wanderer Resonator for any color, and every single Wanderer Resonator control passively gains first strike, and when you deactivate, you get to play any Wanderer Resonator from your hand for free, and he gets a bunch of different effects, but depending on the color, if it's dual colors, he gets multiple effects, etc. And... Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool effects if you read that, right? I think it's pretty cool effects. Yeah, sure. Um, so... We actually had the time to read it. Yeah, well, I mean, the, there's a couple cards where they took a cue from Yu-Gi-Oh, but, you know. But, so, we'll, we'll, we'll go around and... Uh, I don't... I hope I mentioned this to you guys, or, you know, to... The thing we do is we pick one card that should go into the deck and... Did I tell you guys that? I'm no, starting we to think back. Prepared. I, no, I'm I mean, starting to think back. I was like, oh no. Yeah. Did I, do this? I already I already know what what I would say for that. Okay, we'll we'll start with you then. That way, 
So what's the exercise? Well, I hope I hope this isn't. Well, actually, I hope everyone has the same one because I think that this is for sure the one card that needs to go into this deck. And if I may have a small diatribe as to why, I would oh, here we go. gladly explain it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me. Hey, can you dust off that soapbox over right, there? This is the brain? part where I tune out and just prepare <laughs> for my next talk. Right, so. wait. Start, start getting ready, to yell. But obviously, words of Shahrazad. You would probably want four copies of that. If you're going to run a tribal deck, run a tribal deck that has some kind of search capability. They have only very few precious cards like this in Force of Will. Like they just released Voyage of the uh, Floating Isle and Dinosaur Surfacing, uh, Dragon Call from last set. But these one cost chance that turn your entire tribal deck into a toolbox. So Words of Shares Auto allows you to search your deck for any wander and then put it into your hand. And of course, with uh, your ruler, you're able to spend any will right. uh, on that turn. Or, or if next you were to judgment, it's a setup for that. Right, ex exactly. <laughs> it would be a setup for your judgment. So the one attractive feature of this ruler as of right now is that, of course, you can pay for wanderers with any, any will. And you would have access as an extension of that to words of Shahrazad, so you can turn it into a toolbox. Unfortunately, <laughs> your toolbox is going to be filled with like half-eaten Smarties wrappers and and right. and dead batteries. But like as time goes on, that toolbox may become. There just aren't Maybe. a whole lot of there aren't a whole lot of great rulers or like uh, wanderers right now. But I don't I don't think he's ever going to be good at New Frontiers. But in Wanderer, as the years go on, and they they don't even think about it, but just like incidentally print new Wanderers, mm -hmm. that deck and that card for sure will be very. I, I just don't get why they dumped it really. Where like yeah. with the the subsequent sets, they really put in support for the strategies like pandas or uh, uh, Shayla or all those other things. Right. And Adelbert, they were like they made them, and it was just like ah, you know what, we <laughs> fucked this one up. Let's just. Well, was, if you uh, if you notice, they did that with. Book of Light and Book of Dard, um, Dark and yeah. some others. Uh, Jordan said that basically starting with Rhea Cluster, they're ceasing all support for the most part of previous rulers. With yeah. the only time we would see support is in Vingolf. Yeah, Colin, Colin, uh, Demo73 and I were talking about that on the last podcast. So like, it seems to me that everything from um, from Lapis Cluster, they just like they will not print any support for. Like, no more, no more like Gil stuff, no more Christian stuff, no more. No more zero stuff. No more like ancient magic, like you know, Gil, Gil Lapis stuff, um, or you know, um, Daddy at Gil stuff. And like, and like, it, it really seems like they started Raya, and they're just like, this is a, these are the rules you're going with, and these are the support that we're printing right. now, and we're not going to go back and <coughs> print well, out there, any more wonders or anything. There's some it wisdom. Makes sense. There, there's some wisdom to that. However, I think that they should do things like. Um, Hey, here's a Vingolf set. It's like, remember those straight to VHS movies? <laughs> it's like that. It's like, it's straight to Wanderer. Like, here's a set of 60 cards, right? You get two copies of each, 120 card. You know, comes in a cool little box thing. And these don't even reach New Frontiers. They go straight to Wanderer, and they're new hmm. support cards for themes and strategies that only exist in Wanderer. That'd be interesting. Oh, that'd be just retool the whole Wanderer format, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and just like get people excited about another format. <laughs> and then that, that drives demand to buy cards to take care of the fans who have been in the game for a long time. And right, so they can finally That's sell smart. all those Millennia of Ages that they've got. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. You gotta, you gotta use you gotta not. use your brain every now and then, not yeah. your dick. Uh, you can sell all your cards if you make support for formats that nobody plays. Right. I got like three booster boxes over there, of just useless just cards. It's yeah. Pointless. It's pointless. Pointless um, as this can is gonna be when I'm actually finished all the beer that's in it. It's no, that's it's not it's not pointless. You can put the liquid that you consumed back into the can. Right, because I'm probably gonna have to halfway through the show and I don't want right. to get up. Right. So if you hear any like, it's a, you know. beer cans are your own. Uh, it's waste like a receptacle. Toilet. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a portable toilet. <laughs> Very similar to Millennia of Ages. All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. I like that. Perfect. Uh, um, Joey. I really like uh, Words Words O2. Um, it's it's really it's really really good card, and you know, in that if you're doing tribal and if you're doing Adelbert, it's it's really really valuable. Yeah, choose a different card, Joey. Oh, right, right. No, no, no. I'm saying, like, I know. yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> You're trying um, to be a little Joey, cheater. Joey, Joey, let me interrupt and say, like, 
since we both agree that Words of Share is odds like the, the first card that should be on the list, that's that how much of your deck, your stone base has to be tilted towards wind. Towards wind. Because you yeah, for oh, the yeah. ability to cast that, you know? Yeah, like, you I don't all know. Wind? Are you going 10 wind stones? Like, I mean, there's some, there's good enough wind support and like cancels that probably, um, I'd go like half maybe. Right. Maybe like six or seven. Huh? I would say at least half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of wind, uh, something that I think, and this maybe isn't like an auto include, but I do think that with a lot of the uh, additions coming out, I think something interesting that people might be start to run is uh, the old Sun Wukong Wanderer uh, Resonator. Hmm. He has a two two wind uh, six five. Uh, Will of Despair and Flying. When he enters the field, you return target non-Magic Stone, non tears and card to its owner's hand. Um, honestly, I think this guy isn't very good. But I do think that with a lot of the like super good um, like additions and stuff that, that we've been seeing lately in the, in the in the new sets, I think he might he might have like a like a pretty good niche uh, niche like look uh, slot in, in in a deck like this. But <laughs> I agree. I mean, okay. I think if someone's going to be drawing margins, I suppose. Yeah, if like need, if you need a crest balance, if you need some extra support for that, um, I could see where that would be useful. Um, that depends on if anybody actually got it. Well, boxes. no, I mean the the thing is, he can although he doesn't remove his target permanently, he can affect just about everything though. So there's there's some level of trade off at that point. Like that that's a card that I think should have cost one and have lower stats just to yeah. just to be able to get the uh, effect off. Well, that and to be more useful. I mean, it just doesn't seem like Adelbert has this like really strong strategy to like sort of this turn sequence. It's really disjointed. He doesn't it's, really do he doesn't yeah. really do one it's thing. It's like we have like 10, 10 of these these resonators that cost two or three or something like that. It's just like just pick one. Pick yeah. one for whatever you however you feel that day. <laughs> It just doesn't really seem to make sense. Right. And it doesn't have this like sort of like uh, tiered strategy like you see in darkness or you see in uh, in favor or you see in, in other things. It just it just doesn't feel like this. Well, concrete to, I strategy. mean to be to be fair, I think Adalbert's really in tune with his chakras. Is he? <laughs> I think so. yeah, I think so. He's really holistic about the way it, that. Oh, that's why he loses. <laughs> but I just I just think that you know it's it's just a really holistic way of playing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and honestly, I, I really don't like Sun Wukong, but I think that he, you know, he, I'd probably slot in like two, maybe two, maybe three of these, you know, is to, he, what is he green green or green void? He's green green, but I mean, he's oh. a wanderer, so you can pay it with anything. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on that one. Eh. Okay. <laughs> if it was green void, I think he'd be amazing. Right. Why? Which why would? Great, why does green void matter? Totally do that. I'll oh, tell you when you get to my turn, Joey. <laughs> oh, I know. I know exactly what card you is. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oscar. Yeah, next. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because um, I always pick really bad ones. I hope this is a good one. <laughs> I went with the uh, interdimensional space. God dang it. The addition. I knew you were going to go ahead <laughs> hey, you. before you could. If, we got if time. I wasn't next. I was going to be like, no, 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 Con, I'm going next. <laughs> But uh, two green, it's an addition. Uh, you may pay one less to do Judgment of Wanderer J slash Rulers. Also has the ability of you may pay one less to play Wanderer Resonators. And then lastly is J slash Wanderer J slash Resonators. You control gain plus four, plus four. So even just one of these in the field and you're just getting great value all across the board for playing your Resonators and having them be buffed coming in. Okay. Yeah, no, I, that's why I was asking about the Void. But the interdimensional spaces, I think... An amazing card especially inside well obviously only inside this deck but like just the passive buff taking the void less uh, for judgment for playing wanderer resonators and stuff like that i th i just thought it was super cool a uh, card um and uh there's been less addition hate um and people aren't running things like uh, um gusting gust gu gusting winds heavenly Gusting's gust cast? heavenly gust holy crap yeah. Um, it's it's see, been see? so long since we've yeah, seen, I mean, it. I've seen it. Yeah, we haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah, ever since Regalia rotated, people like stopped right. playing it, and exactly. so like it, I felt I feel like it's such a good card that could make this deck just like a fun deck to play at your locals and stuff like that. But this would, 
I feel like that went completely from like from like Oscar, like, oh, I really like this card to like Colin, like, yeah, no, I, I, these are some reasons I would play it. <laughs> um, I, well, I'm just piggybacking he, he, he Oscar. Built, he built this deck and I had these cards in I it. I personally don't like interdimensional space. I know it's like you should probably play it in the deck, but I feel like it I gives you, it. like, I feel like you lose a lot of tempo on like you're doing almost nothing on turn two. Um, and like, yes, you're setting up for other stuff, but. You know, if I had Sun Wukong, I'd just bounce that back to your hand, and then you know, and then start start hitting you. I mean, yeah, I, I wish if it was a if it was a one cost that didn't <laughs> buff, but still did the one co or did like a 100, 100, 200, 200 buff, and still had the one void less payment for everything. It'd obviously be better, but yeah. if it was one cost, I think I think it'd be super good. But I don't know. I just I feel like you lose so much tempo, and like so many people are doing way better stuff on turn two that. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we, we can't explain. But Sacred, and Be Sacred Beats and I just had a conversation in Pantomime that if exposed, if we explained what it was, would blow the lid off of the entire Force of Will community. You guys have no idea what just happened. Please go on. Please go on. I Continue. <laughs> it's mostly because uh, I wasn't prepared for this topic, so I'm just I'm zoned out at this point. I'm uh -oh. watching little pop-ups. There, pop there's gonna be there's gonna be one dude. I didn't know this is what we were doing. There's gonna be I'm one guy. There's gonna be one guy on 4chan who watches this this fucking podcast, and he's like, all right, he plays it again and again and again, like 60, 70, 80 times, right? Even though it's not humanly possible to figure out what we were talking about because part of it involved things that were on screen. But this guy's like so autistic, like Rain Man, right. like genius, he the that he figures it out. The he's got the yarn and he puts on, he spends like, just, he spends like three months. He spends like three months, <laughs> like piecing this together and he does it. And then our reputation is ruined. Like right. if that got out, we would be fucked. But I mean, as he said, not wanting to interrupt this actual discussion <laughs> about something important. Please go on, please go on. <laughs> Well, now, now we're I'm trying to buy Colin time and... to pick a new card because Austin exactly, took his exactly. card. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but he's not doing it. Yeah, I, 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 I picked a card. If you forget, I built a god deck with this this ruler. You, uh, I beat you in so when you had it. So I don't know what you're talking about. It was great before rotation, for the record, when I had my, my gill. <laughs> my card that I picked ahead of time was <laughs> Alice, Alice Dimensional Traveler. Which yeah. most people would be like, what? Why would you pick that card? That part's shit. However, so in case you don't remember, it's from Bingo 3, so 3 costs 5, 5, Wander. If you can play it from your deck while you're searching through your deck. So it can work in combo with the one cost where you're searching your deck. You grab another Wander, and you can play this card on top of that. If, ideal scenario, you have two of those uh, field cards out that Oscar had mentioned a couple minutes before. Uh, suddenly, f you're searching through your deck trying to think you can pay one will with any color put it onto your field and you suddenly have a 13 13 resonator on your field for one cost so if you have four open will when you're searching through your deck you can play all four and you have four 13 13s on your field uh and stuff like that so i thought in combination with that field card and in this deck uh she became like super cool i thought and a lot of fun if you're actually able to get the combo off and stuff like that so that's my card the the way if I'm, uh, the way that that would work even better is if you had something like Faria Summon that had quick cast and you do it at the end phase of your opponent's turn, like leaving your will open to counter or react whatever your opponent's gonna do because this is obviously a very long setup, and then you do Faria Summon on their end phase and then get all those Alice's out. Yeah. And yeah. Then yeah. Then like that. Right. And then and then when your turn begins, they can begin to attack because right. if they're gonna sit out there for a turn. And we're talking this late in the game, I'm going to Eternal Recurrence or do and something. And especially because to... you're playing Adelbert, so you have really easy access to Light and, and Wind Will. Because, right. you know, you're not focusing on Fire, which is his whole his whole purpose for being a piece of trash. I mean, no, you this, don't, this, this you don't do, terrible. You don't do judgment with him. You don't do judgment with him. I would not yeah, do but it's judgment. Like, it's like, what's the point of being able to pay the will of, of Wanderers with I, Fire? If while like, if I, don't do while I agree, that's not the challenge. I mean, if you were really going to build you know, something important... But right. it's like, why bother building that in? I mean, just flip them over because you can't do it anymore anyway. <laughs> you know? I don't know. No, it's because he actually had a good idea and I didn't, so I wanted to. I mean, I have, <laughs> I, have, I have some of those fucking Batman Returns cards 
with the fucking clowns and shit on it. Can I put that in a sleeve and play yeah, it as a fucking that. ruler? Because we still it's got, not even a fucking we game. We still gotta play Konsumi Goddess. It's not even a game. They're so. fucking just bringing the trading cards. <laughs> like, who cares? I'm gonna use that at ARG Richmond. Right. Just write know. Wanderer on it. It's like, there you go. That's my ruler. <laughs> Fuck you. Pretty much. What are you gonna do about it? I mean, but that is a good idea. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually like like that's that's probably one of the only like kind of things that I think this deck would be really cool. Like, like just like. Just like being able to play it from your deck, like one mana is pretty good. Would be a really good combo. Getting there, I it think would be really cool. Sure. I feel so defensive right now. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, see, with this ruler, I just found yeah, I found him just like super fun to play. Obviously, I. Uh, at, he's not very good. I was hoping he was going to be getting some more support after ENW to uh, actually support for different things because there's such a limited pool after rotation of actual Wander Resonators you could use. Before, I had like uh, from some decent combos with Gil and other Resonators and stuff like that, but I feel like without continued support, he fell off pretty hard. But we'll see what happens with him. I mean, uh, his, his his value in the future can only go up because, like, <laughs> the 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 way that I see the deck being played, let's say two, three, four, five years from now, hopefully, Force of Will is still going, of course. Um, <laughs> and I mean that with all the best intentions. <laughs> is that let's say every set they print one Wanderer card on average, right? So three years from now, there might be twelve new Wanderers, Wanderer Resonators, depending on what those are. A deck that was essentially a reactive control deck where you didn't do judgment and just made a toolbox deck that revolved around being able to cast these resonators with any will, so you can make your will, your stone base, whatever you need to control the game, and then toolbox these resonators out. I mean, that could be very, very powerful, depending on... They just need two or three resonators that are at least good, if not excellent, yeah, to, to make the deck worth it, really. I yeah, mean, no. will fixing will fixing is incredible if you can get it for free. <laughs> you know, it, you know what? Uh, um, talking about that just made me think of like of like okay, like like will fixing and will fixing like wanderer, and I think um, are the uh, rulers from memoria still legal in wanderer? Yes, yes, they are. And, they were unbanned. So, yeah. so then I was thinking, like Ayu with rulers memoria and her stone. And wander and i I, I tried that i tried to build that deck uh the problem with taking up eight or nine regalia slots in a deck that already has only one copy of each <laughs> made it super <laughs> made, it, made it super That's inconsistent good, i did try point. it but but what i did is i did four possession stones and four magic stone and moonshade one magic stone and moonlight and then i forget what the other one was and that worked a little bit better like you're you're taking a hit with the magic stone and moonshades but and if you can get there it doesn't matter what the yeah because because there's only like maybe six or seven slots that you can actually put regalia in right oh that's disappointing i was really excited yeah no that was my first thought is the regalia um me too <laughs> spe speaking of the game in, in two or three years are you guys buying into the game is dead hype <laughs> No, man. It's like we we raged about that on the show, right. didn't we? We I made mean, a whole episode about that. You know, it, it's the kind of thing where I don't like to believe that the company actually digests um, the the media that that uh, individuals such as yourselves and ourselves are making. However, we did spend an entire episode talking about the changes that this game should make, and, and they, they did, did all of them. them. They did all the of them. Yeah. So this may be a little bit of conspiracy theory. I mean, I know jet fuel can't melt steel beams, but I think Force Will Company is listening to what we're doing. Right. And, um, but no, they've they've only made improvements, and this yeah. whole sealed ability thing, the sealed item thing, is just a minor setback. They really, really shit the bed with yeah. it. But but the fact that they've made so many other improvements along the right. way especially with ancient knights the big the big thing is like look no one will accept a niche product for whatever reason even though we all belong to subcultures we all belong to niches uh, uh joey and colin you alluded to at least a past interest in in airsoft <laughs> i mean how many people in the united states out of the 330 million people that live here 
play airsoft maybe one two million i mean that's in in a broad term of things that's a very small very tiny minority if, yeah if you were trying to run for office you couldn't uh count on one or two million votes that wouldn't be enough right but to that niche community that's every waking moment of their lives so because force of will isn't the biggest or isn't like the top two or three people think oh the game is dead or the game is dying like there's nothing wrong with serving an underserved niche i think that force of will uh for a number of reasons reaches a segment of the tabletop game audience that wasn't being served right. by existing games which right. is you know why it still exists and the, why it will continue to thrive right they're the people that didn't have an ip involved in right. like like People played the Pokemon trading card game because they played the Pokemon games. They watched the Pokemon show. I mean, I mean, I was into Pokemon everything, and, and that was you know, especially in 90, uh, 97 through two thousand one. You know, I mean, it was it was a, a big fucking time for Pokemon, and that's when they they released that card game and they started making it better and better and better. Same thing with Yu Gi Oh. They had the show. They had you know uh, a, a strong advertising IP associated with it. And Force Will doesn't have that. And that's why it has to rely on game mechanics and the hype factor alone. And as long as they continue to make these improvements, I mean, we're not really going to see a problem with it. It's just, it's just a matter of people realizing it's a good game, people dipping out of magic because it's starting to shit the bed on its own right, <laughs> and people you know, leaving games like Yu-Gi-Oh! because it's gone far beyond the point that it should have. I mean, Pokemon's still strong. I mean, I, I would play Pokemon if it, if it wasn't for Force of Will. And... Um, Oscar just I, I opened some Pokemon packs. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's go, it's going at all. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I, mean, I I agree. Yeah, I I like among all the card games that I've played, which is mainly just Yu Gi Oh, Pokemon, and Magic. Like, I I really like I really love like like playing Magic and like the the interactiveness and and but um, but you know then when it when it when I moved to Texas with uh with Colin Colin and, and Oscar, we we played a lot of Pokemon and like not a lot of Magic. So when Oscar introduced this to me, it was like such a good mix of like I mean it was it was, it was a lot more like magic. So like the I love that interactiveness and like the game mechanics themselves of like you can never get mana screwed, you can never like you, your your deck is you're always gonna be drawing like gas and stuff and like so it's much more interesting. So so it's a lot more consistent like Yu Gi Oh with like forty card decks. Mm -hmm. So like I just feel like they've taken the best things from every from every single like right. card game and yeah. combine them and, and, I, like, and i think that's the power of the game too yeah because the power of the game comes from people being uh being screwed out of the game that they did like <laughs> and someone comes along and goes well if you like this <laughs> right you'll definitely like force of will and i mean and that's the thing is people like well i like games where you have mana and um you, you summon creatures do all this fuck bullshit Force will. Oh yeah, I yeah. like Yu-Gi-Oh because it's crazy and it's anime, and uh, but they they basically made it retarded. Force will. Like, <laughs> and that's what I think the the power comes from it is that it's from other. It has to be other people telling them about it because there's nothing else. The company doesn't advertise for it. They have no IP that pushes it. They don't have a, a, a U.S. Force will administration that actually wants you to gain information about the game <laughs> on your own accord and like a fan site that's like really an official site but a fan site. Like, there's nothing other than individual. Evangelation, that's not the right word, for the game. And and the same situation that you're describing with Oscar, I mean, that's the same thing that, that happened to me where it's, you know, I was described to this game and I said, well, I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, it has that and more. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't think it's going to go anywhere as long as people continue to, and it's got some big ass titties, but as long as people <laughs> continue to do that thing for their friends or, or people at their game stores or people at tournaments, that's where it's it strength lies. Yeah. And you can, and you can be like you, you, you like Yu-Gi-Oh, but you hate you hate reading entire novels. You come yeah. Force of Will. <laughs> right. uh, but, uh, real quick before before we go here, what are your uh, I have you? I'm curious if you guys have looked at it all since last time we talked. What are thoughts on uh, casters? Thumbs up or thumbs down if, if you've seen uh, anything. <laughs> the last time we were on your channel was the last, the first and last time I had ever seen or <laughs> I talked figured. about Caster Chronicles. So <laughs> I don't. I mean, fair it's, enough. Yeah. It's, it's just, just not for me. It's, it's, not for me. it's Lollycon the game, right? And I mean, I'm into full-figured women. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, 
really, really regrettably, I probably shouldn't say this, but it does. I mean, you guys know this. The, the people who listen to this listener or show know this. But uh, whenever, you, like on my search bars on on all my computers and phones and devices, when you press the word like the the key B, it automatically fills in BBW. Like you're <laughs> you're just you're done. Like that's what you're looking. Like, it's like I wasn't looking for that, but I am now. Yeah, your full art copies of Magic Power because I need them all. Right. <laughs> this is this uh, is why you play Force of Will. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Two different markets. Right. right exactly. Right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for thanks for coming back onto our uh, or I guess this first time technically on here on our podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. podcast. That's for sure. Um, if you guys listen to this and for some reason don't listen to them, they're the pretty much the main Force Will podcast. Unless you you listen to uh, what's the name of the other one, Oscar? Failcast. Oh, fail, grinning remnant. Shit yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's, that's it. Outside of that, <laughs> main, main uh, Force Will podcast. Uh, but they've been doing how many episodes are you on now? We're on 30, 36. 36. 36. De- decent number there. Um, yeah, so that's at youtube.com slash jroller, and then you guys have your website, jroller.net, where you actually have the uh, leaked cards on there if people ever wanted yeah. to see them, since they're not on the U.S. group, and if they're in the After, after Dark group, they're heavily buried by memes and stuff pretty quickly. Of course. It's actually uh, just like the Facebook page, however, it's not covered in, like, a layer of filth on top. Like, if you actually want to have discussions about the game, if you actually want to, you know, see the leaked stuff and be free from the, the stretching, the long arm of the law, the red scare that is the U.S. <laughs> official group. You can go to Yeah, If you don't want that. Robert Herbert uh, dribbling hamburger crumbs down the back of your collar, right. uh, then J. Dash really does. That's, <laughs> right the internet. That's, that, I mean, that's inherently what it's designed for, and nobody uses it, so hopefully that'll that'll start coming soon. <laughs> so, yeah. too many people get yeah. crumbs. And... Uh, and- and uh, Oscar was also here, even though he didn't talk very much. <laughs> I, I agreed with everybody, everything, everything right. everybody said. I think, that's, up. I think that's my fault, Oscar. I'm sorry. <laughs> I went on my drunken ramblings. <laughs> and Joey got here last minute, as always. Oh, yeah. I, I, thought, I thought that was happening at like, night, but so I'm still like, we got bed hair and whatever. He, he sleeps in pretty late. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, uh, I'll talk to you. We'll see you guys uh, hopefully soon. Thanks for having us on, guys. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for being here. Talk to you later. See you.